And so I just want to just to sort of reemphasize the, the sort of um, benefit here. I think that that what um, mechanical Turk and others offer, right, is really a um, it's almost like the the cloud computing benefit, um, but for your human being infrastructure, right? So you know this is like a similar to the cloud computing thing, but but you know you look at outsourcing that can make it closer to your your um, your make your labor supply closer to demand, right? But with, um, with this sort of processing question, what happens is you're really only bringing people to work for you right as you need the problem, right? So if you're trying to get, um, if you're trying to go through user uploads and, and classify them in real time, right, you might not know any given day how many uploads you're gonna get, right? But with, with all of these kinds of approaches, the huge benefit here, right, is that you're actually gonna get them labeled um, in the volume that you need um, as you need it. Um, and so then, the I just want to make make a few more points about sort of the, the benefits of this, right? So um, I remember back when I was in school, I stole this slide from um, Dan Klein, who I worked with at the Stanford AI Lab. And at the, in, in like 2003, people were really interested in um, unsupervised NLP, right? So with, with machine learning approaches, right, which has gotten so so popular now, right, there's, there's sort of two approaches. Right? There's the supervised learning, right, which is kind of like the, the students on the left, right, where you like feed them tons of work, right, and you say, you show them tons and tons of examples, right, which is sort of the more common um, industrial approach, right, and, and sort of the reason that, you know, for example, like Google Translate works so well, I'm told, is because they've, they've shown the Google Translate algorithms orders of magnitude more um, data than any other algorithms have been shown in the past, right, but, um, but a lot of times you don't have the access to these examples, right? these examples are, are hard to get, so especially for academics, it's hard for them to get new data sets. So they put in tons and tons of work in this kind of unsupervised NLP, right? Which is like really appealing, right? Because it's sort of like how we learn, right? Like we don't get fed necessarily examples when we learn language, right? We weren't saying, you know, this means this, right? We're just sort of observing the world around us. And so there's all this work on, um, on sort of unsupervised learning that may not be um, that may not be as necessary as it seemed like five years ago, right? Because actually it's pretty easy uh, to go out and collect, you know, through these crowdsourced approaches, it's easy to go out and collect um, data for your for your systems learning, right? So it, so we may be seeing that we're collecting all kinds of new corporate that we weren't expecting um, to be able to collect in the past, and and this is really good, right? Because and, you know this is just one example of um, machine learning approach, but every single machine learning paper has this graph, right, where you you look at the number of um, training examples that it saw as the x-axis, the quality is the y-axis, right, and it just keeps going up and up and up. Right, so you add more training examples, and this is showing you know, two different models that you know, one model is maybe slightly better than the other model, but the dominant factor here is just the amount of data um, that's being collected. Right? So not only is it, is, is it powerful to collect this data for cheap, right, but it, the machine learning approaches that work so well with these automated data collection approaches magnify the impact um, of the crowdsourcing work. Um, and just finally, I'm, I'm so excited about um, the Google Prediction API, which I think actually um, works really well with this, right? So I was even thinking, you know, maybe my company would have a system where you send in a question and sometimes it sends it to the, the Google Prediction API and sometimes it sends it to Mechanical Turk, right? So depending on the accuracy um, that someone requires, right? You can imagine, like, implementing this, right? I mean, it's, you have, like, prediction as a service, you have human beings um, as a service, right? And so you can smartly send it um, to where, you, to, depending, on your, um, depending on your accuracy cost, trade-offs, you can send it to the appropriate location. And it, and the the kind of Turk-like approaches works really well with this kind of approach because you can actually feed the answers back into your prediction um, system, right? So uh, machine learning works best when you do something called active learning where you train it on the examples that it's gotten wrong. And so the examples that it's gotten wrong or it's having a hard time on, it's exactly the examples that you want to use a crowdsourcing approach uh, to get better labels for. And those are actually going to be the perfect ones to improve your um, prediction system. 